Great to have you with us. Now, a total of 16,060 candidates are sitting the 2018 Basic Education Certificate Examination nationwide. Pardon me, that number is 509,000. Now, the exam is being written at 1,772 centers scattered across the country. Here in Accra, officials of the Ministry of Education, I should say, and the Ghana Education Service have been touring some of the participating centers to ascertain the progress of the one-week examination which began this morning. Uh, we'll be going to my colleague Patricia Gasso who has been following one of these teams in a moment but let's first of all go to the Ashanti region where my colleague from Love FM Nanaya Ojima has been monitoring uh, the examination process so far. Nanaya, if you can hear me first of all how many centers have you been to and what is the general mood in the examination centers? Okay, I've been to seven out of the 375 centers in the Ashanti region, and um, the mood is that of a mixed feeling after the first paper. That's the English paper. Most of the students um, are excited, but there are a few others who think um, they've deviated some questions and um, they've answered some of the questions and they could have answered rightly, wrongly. So um, some are not so excited. But um, after all, they are preparing for the next paper, which is at 12.30. And um, 104,942 candidates are sitting the BEC at, as I, uh, at 375 centers in the region. And as I said earlier, at the moment, students are on break after writing the first paper, which started at 9 a.m. And some few areas delayed in starting the exam due to um, delay in the arrival of the exam papers. And uh, my investigation... So some, kind, some coordinators had arrived late at the WIAC offices since um, police personnel who were to um, escort them to, to, to the centre to, uh, from the um, WIAC office to the centre is delayed for some time. But according to supervisors, um, this will not affect um, the examination. Rather, it will affect um, the, the break time for the, for the candidate. Um, aside that, the exam has been generally successful and the students, um, after writing the first paper, um, are expectant of the results that, or are expectant of getting good results in, in, in the English paper. And generally, I would say that it's been um, a good um, examination. Now, apart from the lateness of some of the exam officers in arriving with the papers, have there been any other incidents recorded? Not really. I said um, the normal absenteeism that you record um, every time there is an examination like this. Um, at um, the Kumasi Anglican Senior High School, about eight, um, eight students were absent. That about nine, nine students were absent, with um, seven of them being females and two of them being males. And um, the supervisor speaking, who spoke to me couldn't see uh, the reasons why these students were absent. So generally, it's been good aside uh, absenteeism and also late, the delay in the start of the examination. Right, thank you very much, Anaya Aljima, for joining us. We now go straight to the eastern region where my colleague Kofi Xiao is observing the situation from there. Kofi, I understand some of the candidates are being given free meals during the exam. Come again? Yes, I understand some of the candidates are being given free meals during the exam. Yes, yes, yes. This is an initiative of the Member of Parliament for the area, Thomas. I'm he's for the German, and according to him, he's had reports that some of the students have been ab absenting themselves uh, from writing the DEC exam. So uh, this time around, he decided uh, to uh, provide free meals for these students so that they can motivate them, especially for those who are coming from uh, very far places and from poor backgrounds. So uh, he did that today. Uh, he fed about 1,731 students in the constituency who are writing the BEC exam. So he fed them with food, that is right, and decided to also give them uh, some drinks and vegetables and fruit. So uh, that is the situation here in Esso German. Right, thank you, Kofi. Um, now let's stay a bit further with this issue and let's hear the Member of Parliament for Esui Jaman telling us why he decided to take this action. 
satisfied with our performance. That is why I have been doing a lot to contribute to see a steady improvement in the performance of our kids in BEC, WASI, and every other examination. And, and so that is why this year, for instance, I sponsored the district mock exams. Uh, one mock exams for all the candidates in the in the district, and that was also an attempt to prepare them for today. And so we believe that the teachers have done enough, uh, and the children may also have prepared enough for the exams. And so we are hoping that at the end of the day, we are going to see a very good improvement over the previous years. Yeah, when I went round to visit the candidates, I saw two students who really looked angry before the second paper and I offered them money to buy food. So I asked myself, why don't I uh, try to feed all the candidates so that if there is any child who, uh, whose performance will be affected before, because of anger, that will be eradicated. So that was the Member of Parliament who provided the meals. Let's now hear from the students who consume the meals. <laughs> He will continue to do this and it will really, really help us. And we thank him for that. May God be blessed. They don't get money to buy food, but because of him now, I'm getting food to eat and I'm very grateful for him. And not all of us that have money to come and buy food. Maybe because of the DEC, some people will not get money to come to school and because of that, they will be sitting idle. Even if they have to write their exams for maybe because of because they haven't get anything to eat, they will not even be able to write their exams and they will feel so they are so plus them. Thanks for staying with us. Let's stay with the issue of the BECE because in the northern region, 151 pupils of Prince of Peace JHS in Tamale have been denied access to the examination center at the Northern School of Business for not having index numbers after it emerged the school proprietor failed to register them for the BECE. Only 75 of the pupils have been registered even though they say they have paid their fees. Let's hear some of the disappointed candidates. We came here around 5 o'clock and after we came, it was said that our index numbers are not existing. And we paid the money to the man, the teacher, the professor. Each of us, I think we paid about 500 Ghana cities just for the registration. So yesterday, he asked us to come so that he will lead us to here, so that we can check our index numbers. When we came, we couldn't see him. So it was around 3 o'clock when he came back. We can see that he's not in, he's was, he was in a sad mood. When, he, when we asked him, he, asked, he said that our index numbers, that they cut off 75, uh, 76 students out of 151 students. So 175 students are qualified to write the examination. And we don't know the reason why. So how does that make you feel, that you are not going to write the exams? I feel bored because each of us, our, uh, our parents, will think that we are ready to write the examination. And when we came, this is happening. So we, we don't know how to tell our parents. So I feel bored. Have you... Have you been to the White Center to report the incident? Yeah. Yes, we went there. When we went there, the coordinator, he said 
it has been reported there. So already, but he said 75 students are registered for the school. He's aware of 75 students. That was a student, a disgruntled student of Prince of Peace GHS in Tamale, speaking with my colleague Hashmin Mohammed. Let's go on the phone lines now and speak further with Hashmin because we understand uh, the headmaster, the proprietor in, in question has been arrested. Hashmin. Right, um, so we, are, we have been joined on the phone by Hashmin Mohammed. We are trying to establish that connection with him. Hashmin, if you can hear me, we understand the proprietor in question has been arrested. Yes, he has been arrested. He has been picked up by the district uh, CID. When I visited the district CID a while ago, they were taking his initial statement. And I was told uh, it is after they have taken his initial statement that they will be able to give detailed information as to the next line of action. On what basis have they arrested him? They arrested him on the base, based on the complaint filed by the, the peoples and their parents, but for the fact that they have not been able, they have been denied access to the examination center for not having index numbers, even though they have paid to enable them write the exam. Has he been charged? No judges has been prepared on him yet. Uh, they were taking his initial statement. It is after the initial statement that charges will be leveled against him and then the investigations will continue. Now, you spoke to the students. Did any of them indicate what they were going to do now that they are unable to write the exam? Well, there's, for the students, they look helpless and they want authorities to investigate properly and then uh, institute their appropriate disciplinary issues to their right. proprietor. Okay, Hashmi and Mohammed, thank you very much for joining us from Tamale. Now here in Accra, officials of the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service have been touring some of the participating centers to ascertain the progress of the one-week examination which began this morning. My colleague Patricia Gasu has been following one of those teams and filed this report. Excited student who just finished with their first paper that is English and uh, I have some of them here to tell me their experience. What's your name? Painty Jijo. So how was your paper? It was very nice. It it's was a great experience. Great experience? Yes, right in this. Are you prepared for the next one? Yes, please. What was the next paper? Uh, religious and moral education. That's at what time? So, one o'clock. Okay, oh, okay, one. One. So you're you're hoping for the best in all the papers, right? Yes, yes. Please. Oh, okay. So let me speak to you. your name. And now me, Geraldine Formedi. Okay. How was the paper? It was good. Like it was an experience writing BC. <laughs> okay. Was 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 it was it difficult? Was it difficult? No, not that difficult. You but could answer everything. Yeah, everything. You're yeah. confident about that? Yeah, I'm confident. I'm really certain about that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, are you prepared for the next paper? Yes. Okay, all right. Thank you. What was your name? I see you, Frederick. How was the paper? It wasn't that difficult. It was Coco Cra. Yeah, that's Coco. Eh. Uh, yes. So, are you prepared for the next paper? Yes. Well, that's RME? Yeah. Okay, are you sure you are ready for it? Yes, I'm well ready. So, this one, what should we be expecting? It should be like the English. But we are all ready for it. We are all ready for it. Okay, so the first paper, what do you think you'll get? Oh, grade one. Wow. <laughs> What's your name? Someone, good man. Tell me about the paper. Tell me about the experience. Oh, it's, it's something, it's an experience. So, but the paper, I felt the paper. I like the paper. <laughs> he says he felt the paper. What, uh, I, what I thought of, that was, not, that was not how, I was thinking it would be something difficult, so, oh, but it's just cool. You answered everything? Almost everything. So what are you expecting? Oh, I'm expecting grade one for the English. English, they are grade one. Hey. They bored. Hey. All the best. Yeah. You're very sure? Yes, please. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi, I have some most. This is from is that Fruits Academy. Yeah. How was the paper? Mm, the paper was cool. What's your name? Mm, Asante Prince Kumi. Okay. How was the paper? Yeah, the paper was cool. Mm, we did what we could write. Mm. So what you were expecting? Did you see all of that? Yeah. Some of them too. No, though it was difficult, but we had ideas about it. Okay. 
we mm. went through some past questions. Yes. We, and after that, we thought outside the question so that we can get more points to write. Oh. You're from St. John Bilingual Institute. Yeah. How was the paper? It was good. You're not really sure, eh? It was good. You sure? Yes. Were you able to answer everything? Mm -hmm. Some. So you left the rest? I left about two, two questions. Oh, okay, okay. About the um, literature. Yeah. Actually, what I learned... They didn't come. Yes. Apostle whatever. <laughs> yes. Why, well, you got some past questions? Oh, no. But I was solving some with my teacher, that one. It means, um, like, the whole class, we were solving it with our teacher. He was teaching us, but I thought one of them would come back. None of it came. But were you able to answer some? Yes. But what happened to the rest? Oh, I did it. You did what you could? Yes. Oh, what was the paper? So easy, but I wasn't expecting what came. Actually, our teacher told us that the mock we are writing yeah. would be difficult than the B's. But when we went in for the English, the literature was so <laughs> difficult, especially. Yeah. The, yeah, the questions they asked was so difficult. So we did what we could. Okay, so are you prepared for the next paper? Yes. Very prepared. You, the one you had a mock in school, because uh, that particular paper, right? Yes. So, um... Just <laughs> <Just relax. laughs> I'm ready, I'm already here for you. <laughs> okay, the question again, Pat. Okay. Are you prepared for the next paper? Yes, please. And you sure that one will be better than the English? Yes, please. Okay. Because um, the English we were writing, it was like... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> the questions were difficult? Mm, yes. And th that's certainly a, an interesting interaction Patricia is having with those BECE candidates. As you can see, some are very confident. Some are also not so confident. All the best to all of them anyway. There are 500,000 of them across the country, by the way. Now, we'll soon be taking you to the Medina Social Welfare Center, where former president Jerry John Rawlins is speaking at a commemoration event for the June 4th Revolution. We understand that former president Rawlins is speaking now to the gathering, uh, which is commemorating the June 4th Revolution. Let's take you there live. will feel equally inspired listening to them. A few evenings ago, a retired colonel and uh, a young doctor were having a chat in my office. And the young the retired colonel talking about uh, June 4th, the linkage, the strong linkage, the passion of uh, NDC evolving out of uh, the activities and the political aims and ambitions of uh, June 4th. But uh, the doctor said to him, I can see the link you're drawing between uh, NDC and June 4th as if one belonged to the other. I, I must disagree with you. June 4th belonged to the whole country. June 4th meant so much to all of us. While well, we are grateful that is giving birth to the PNDC and the NDC, there were those of us who do not belong to this party, this movement, but still very much believed in what June 4th stood for. Ladies and gentlemen, maybe I should collect these uh, ladies and gentlemen and constitute a political check service once a week in every corner of the country. So we can, spare, we can uh, share with people the necessary political language, what we need to know. Ladies and gentlemen, no man must apologize for the truth. We must apologize for lying, for stealing, for doing corrupt things, for doing evil things, and not the other way around. However, if certain truths get distorted, 
and making a situation look bad, I had no choice but to render an apology for using harsh words. Ladies and gentlemen, on the stage the other day, I was sharing with you that you will hear a lot more of the evil things that happened in the past. People have cleaned and wiped and washed their ears, ready to hear some more booms today. I'm sure alongside the booms, there may be a few more apologies. No, ladies and gentlemen, I've done quite a bit of thinking and uh, seeing the number of uh, speakers today and all that they have said, I think we'll have to shelve the booms in the files for another period. Okay, maybe I'll let you know of only two. I saw something this morning. I watched it out on BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, but I saw no sign of it. And I was beginning to wonder if what I saw on the social network was true or false. I sincerely hope that it is not fake news. The great, great big shell, the petrol, the gas oil, the kerosene, big company that produces all these uh, fuels called Shell is supposed to have held a press conference apologizing for their past misdeeds, what they've done to the Niger Delta. I couldn't believe it. Have, have any of you seen it? Is it true? We don't know. It looks very true, but this is how they do fake news anyway. I sincerely hope that what I saw this morning is true. For a company as big as they are to apologize for the misdeeds, the evil things they've done to people who live in the Niger Delta, and possibly in other parts of the world, I sincerely hope that we will see some more apologies from other corporate organizations like them and to go beyond apologies, to go beyond reconciliations and begin to repair some of the damages of the past. I sincerely hope that some of their African collaborators will also begin to consider doing the same. Because Africa, Black Africa, has suffered too long in the hands of these multinationals with their African collaborators. I'm also looking forward to that day when they will begin to apologize and make reparation for some of their misdeeds. Ladies and gentlemen, let me once again thank all of you for praising the odds to converge here and to listen to us. Right, so that's uh, former President Jerry John Rawlings speaking there at a ceremony to commemorate the anniversary of the June 4th revolution. It's taking place at the Medina Social Welfare Center. You heard him there um, just speaking on how he does not want to drop a boom in his own words. Um, he doesn't want to make any provocative statements. However, he's commenting on a recent publication on the BBC about an apology by um, a multinational oil company, Shell, on some 
improprieties that have taken place in that company. We will be moving on and we'll go back to the Marina Social Welfare Center as and when um, we, the program progresses there. But uh, let's speak about another issue that has taken the headlines in uh, the past few days. Now, commercial drivers are not happy about the new 10% increases in transport fares. The drivers feel the margin is too small considering the number of times fuel prices have gone up over the period and that the increments should have been between 20 and 30%. The increment should have been 50 percent because to increase first just by 20 pesos is unfair. But what can we do? We would accept it in good faith. When price of fuel shoots up, it affects every aspect of our lives. So I just say, Ghana had the pair, yet to my lowest supplier driver for, and the pen a lowest, yen 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 lowest of cra, yen a contract to four book cra. So I just say, 20 pesos was a pen a year that was so. Well, Baba called you all know, and also the same thing, no increasing, by increasing now, one city, two city, who be sent a back at your say, I took four. By yen a year, I do four and a year, then 20 pesos was a pen on my year. So I just say, ah, yaba lucura, yaba yenda, yaba fanasa. The young passenger knows where you have a fan is an idea. You was the answer there to petrol and the way so close to even crowd cock or toss pepper to crown no boy. The way I understand the other fan is we have no choice than to obey orders from above. I would have preferred a 30 percent increment. Everything, including fuel and spare parts, have shot up, so 10 percent will really not be enough. Well, the sun will control engine, will control spare parts, break food in the money, money boy, ninja, no boy, but I buy an idea by say 20 percent. Now, I'm a penifone de my and the other fanasa now by end. I've alerted them since Friday, so they are all away. How much were you charging initially, and how much are you supposed to charge now? At first, we were charging 230 from here to Dansuman and Dansuma to Circle. But now, when the increment came, it came like 230 increment. So, no, we, do, we don't have the persuasion. So, we have cut it short, 250. So, we add 20 persuasion to, to the old fare. Mm, and that's supposed to be the approved 10 persuasion yeah. you're supposed to take. I know that at first, anytime there's an increment in prices, we have confusions at uh, you know, our various stations. Have you experienced anything today? No. Today, I came here at 330 p.m. 3.30 a.m. this morning, but nobody has complained about the fare to me. You know why? I, I can explain to these people that some of them are very, very hard. But as of now, I haven't got any complaint. So I think it's not. Now, it's typical for passengers to argue and fight with drivers and mates over new fares any time these new fares take effect. Interestingly, however, some passengers here in Accra seem unperturbed about the new fares and are cooperating with their various transporters. Yeah, but I just knew that there would be an increment, but I didn't know when. But are you okay with the price, Omojin? Actually, you are in need, so you have to go by that. You know where you are going to, and you know what you are going to get there, so you can't even fight with them. Even if you fight with them, it's what they are taking. So we just have to compile with them and give it to them. But have you calculated the 10% on the, the, the price that you were given? Actually, no, I've not calculated. I'm going to uh, Fanko. Fanko, how much is that? Length is five cities. Yeah. Five minus six? Uh, uh, five cities. Are you aware um, of the increment in the price? I'm aware. But I'm not, I'm not aware, but if yeah, uh, they've increased the fare. I'll be always ready to pay. We used to pay two cities 30 pesos for the trip, but now it's two cities 50 pesos. I hear there's been an increase of about 20 pesos. No one complained on our first trip. Now, away from that, principal of the WAC Technical Institute has expressed worry over the increasing cases of witchcraft at the institute. 
Justine Bayel said it is a thorny issue at the Institute as they continue to get reports one student or the other is being bewitched by other students. Speaking at the Parent Teacher Association meeting at the, the Institute, Mr. Bayel said um, as some students confessed having powers of witchcraft and urged their parents and guardians who gave them the charms for purpose of protection to kindly deliver them from it. The War Technical Institute was established some 25 years ago with the aim of turning out graduates who are not only employed but self-sufficient. The institute runs courses in building engineering, vocational and business, totaling 11 departments. Until last year, all programs of the institute were run on full time but have now given opportunity to persons who otherwise might have been busy in the morning to enroll at the institute for afternoon programs. Addressing the general meeting of the Parent Teacher Association, principal of the institute, Justin Bayele, expressed concern over the increasing rate of witchcraft at the institute, urging parents and guardians to protect their children from the evil act. Some of these students confess having those powers. I would wish to plead with all parents and guardians to protect their wards from this evil act. Those that have given their wards this charm for protection or whatsoever we don't know should please try and deliver them. The War Technical Institute is bedeviled with several challenges, topmost among them being inadequate dormitory facilities for the boys compelling management to house students in mixed structures. The institute is also handicapped in respect of classrooms, workshops, furniture and laboratories. Justin Bailey expressed worry over the slow pace of construction work meant to address the challenges. Upper West Regional Minister Alaji Suleiman Al Hassan pledged to work assiduously on the consensus raised by the principal. The Parent Teacher Association donated a Nevada pickup worth 77,000 Ghana cities to the Institute to ease up transportation challenges. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. Still watching Joy News today, I am Daniel Daze. It's now time for business with Emmanuel Abwajiriafi.